Run it back, Philly! No frauds, no fanboys, no intros. Harden's stance has not changed, a source close to him told The Athletic. He still wants to leave Philadelphia. He's still upset with how Maury handled his situation heading into possible free agency last month. And even with the recent revelation that Harden attended the same party as the Sixers, Joel Embiid and former Sixers owner Michael Rubin in Vegas, he's still determined to start next season in a Clippers jersey. First of all, I did not care about those photos at the Michael Rubin party I know uh, some people thought that meant, look, they're going to run it back. No, what happened was James Harden's not missing a big party. That's what happened. Celebrity party, rappers, probably strippers, uh, famous other actresses, whatever else. James Harden's going to be there. Doesn't even matter. So I didn't care too much about that. Uh, what are, What are your first thoughts about this uh, this little piece right here, Arby? <laughs> So, man, like we said last week, you know, the, the way that this situation has been reported on is just so odd. I mean, it's back and forth, and I know it's peak off season, but it, I feel like we can't gauge anything at this point. The Sixers are signing rampant centers, and James Harden <laughs> literally, like, can't make up his mind, right? Like, okay, he wants a trade. Daryl Moore and the Sixers say no, but then he reiterates his trade request per Ramona Shelburne, and then according to Dave McMenamin, it's likely he ends up with the Sixers. Let's ask the chat. What do you guys think? Is he going to stay or go? I said this to you last week, and I will stand on it. Like Daryl Morey is about to stand on his trade request. We're going to hit a standoff here. I think that's what's going to happen. And I, we'll get into this more as we go on. But James Harden is starting to really frustrate me as a guy who supported him and who thought you know that he took a better role and adjusted for the team. He's really starting to piss me off because this Sixers team's trying to move forward. They can't do anything because they're kind of strapped down by the Harden situation. And we're entering Simmons territory 2.0. The difference, though, is that James Harden doesn't have, you know, the similar leverage because he can't sit out in, an entire year. He's going to be 34. Then nobody's going to sign him. But the thing about it that really pisses me off is that, James, it's not like you can just, you know, like you didn't opt out and sign a four-year max with another team, right? Nobody wants you. The value is not there to give you that contract. Now, does James Harden bring a lot to the table for a team? Yes, he a great facilitator, one of the best scorers of all time. Can't do it anymore at that level, but he can still have those type of games. And this is the best situation for him to earn that next contract. So the fact that he wants to go to LA, play on a one-year deal, and try to earn a contract there it kind of tells me that maybe he doesn't care about ball that much. Maybe he just wants to be back home in LA. And it's really frustrating because the Sixers are kind of in no man's land right now. They kind of need Harden back, but he's not coming back because what does history tell you? Once Harden is unhappy, there's no going back. Yeah, that's that's probably my main thing with it. I know Daryl's trying to play this game. I know the Sixers are trying to play this game. And they're like, they have faith that they can, uh, you know, convince James to come back and play for the Sixers. Listen, one thing an egomaniac never, ever, ever does is say, all right, I changed my mind. Uh, I'm going to do what you want to do. When he says, I'm doing what I want to do, he's there's no possible way he's playing. It happened in Houston, and you saw what happened. They, they said he was part, he showed it up to training camp late because he was partying the night before that was a fact and he was like 40 pounds heavier he's not joking when he says i want to go here yeah and it, it daryl you, you you can't win this i understand being patient trying to get more assets from the clippers trying to drive up the price trying to say listen we'll sit on it but to do the same thing you did with ben simmons we we don't have to trade him i know he likes to play that game but the clippers know that when james harden wants to go somewhere he's not changing his mind so maybe that gives the Clippers, you know, a little bit of a heads up or a little bit of a leg up in the negotiation process. I think the funniest part about this this quote is that he's still upset with how Maury handled his situation heading into possible free agency last month. And you just said, you know, maybe he doesn't care about basketball. I, I, I haven't thought he has for a long time. He thought because I took a pay cut. I'm getting a four year max deal the next time I sign. He didn't actually think that his play or level of dedication or anything had anything to do with it. He just thought he was automatically getting that, that four-year max contract because he did the Sixers a favor. And he put Daryl Moore in a position where he's like, 
I just can't do that, James. Look, my guy Sean Bernard just tweeted the other day again. He said, I went back and watched tape from game six and game seven because I'm a psycho. And James Harden was even worse than I remembered. He had a combined 21 points, 16 assists, 10 turnovers, 25% from the floor, and he was 1 for 11 from 3 for a minus 40 in Game 6 and Game 7. I understand he had two good games, but again, he was the absolute worst player on the floor for four out of the seven games. He helped us, and he hurt us double that. And there's just no way Daryl Morey could have said, all right, I'm going to give you a four-year max contract. The city of Philly would have burned down. That's another part of it. This is probably the wrong city to try to pull this junk, dude. These fans will boycott and pro- like protest outside the arena. It's not Houston. Dude, I, I have so many like additional issues on top of what you added. Uh, number one, I mean, he got Doc Rivers fired. Now, did a lot of us want Doc fired? Yes. But you were, according to reports, the main source in getting Doc fired. So you got the coach fired. And then they bring in the new coach. You don't want to play with him. And that's number one. Number right. two, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you came to Philadelphia. Now, I, I disagree with you a little bit. I think he still wants to win. I think he wants that last piece on his resume. But I do agree with you in a sense that he he does want to get paid. My problem, though, is that nobody's paying you, James. Nobody. It's not like you opted out. You opted in. You know why he opted in? Because he wants that guaranteed $35 million. It's not to facilitate a trade. They could have done a sign and trade. Nobody wants James Harden, and he knows Daryl Morey best. Daryl is not going to settle for T-Man and Rocco and Norman Powell. Now, if the Sixers can get back some draft assets, I'm more than happy. And I think Daryl Morey has more leverage in this situation because as bad as Ben Simmons was, he could have sat for two, three years. James Harden can't do that. The this Sixers, is actually crazy. The Sixers can get more cap space next year. You know Tobias's contract is going to be off, and it feels like we're kind of trending towards that, that land of let's build for 24. It's just hard to sell that with Joel coming off an MVP, having to take that next step in the playoffs, with Maxi trying to take another leap. Are you willing to waste another year of Joel's prime? That's the tough thing. It feels like the best thing to do is get rid of that dead weight get Tobias and James off, clear $70 million of cap space plus, and, and let these other guys, all these centers expire, and just have a fresh vault around Maxi and Embiid. But it's like Sixer fans are so impatient. They're so frustrated, as they should be. The time now is to win. But it's like, James, you're, you're, you're demanding here what you, what you don't deserve right now. Like, if the Sixers got to the finals, I'd have no problem with paying James Harden. The thing is, you took a pay cut, this team tampered for Daniel freaking house and PJ Tucker, and they didn't get further than they did before. So that's the business of it, James. It can't, they, they can't pay you. It's just, it's what it comes down to. It's the business. I get why he's frustrated, but you want, you want another contract? Come out here and lead this team to the finals. How about that? Yeah, that'll get you on. That'll get you on. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand, you know, demanding a trade, but you can't really demand a contract. <laughs> Just, yeah, and, and, this and then, might be the first time I've ever heard of a player demanding a contract. Yeah, and, and then Ramona Shelburne says it's not a trade demand; it's a request. Well, what is it? What is it? Like every time he requests a trade, he wants out. Right? He's not coming back. Like he was with Joel Embiid. You know, they talked about it at least once. They're they've been buddies. They've gotten closer, like Joel said. And it seems like there's all professionalism and respect between the two. It's just James does not want to play unless he gets his three or four year contract. And it's frustrating, man. It's it's holding this team down right now. Yeah, I think the Daryl Morey, James Harden now going against each other thing is it's really like so crazy. You can't write stuff like this. This is like one of those, I don't know, this is like a superhero movie or something where they were like best friends coming up when they were kids, you know what I mean? And then this guy went this way and this guy went this way. And like at the end of the movie, they're the two villains that are now like destroying a whole city but trying to kill each other. Like it's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And Yeah, James is, it doesn't make much sense that he's demanding this, uh, like, trade or demanding contracts or whatever. Yeah, he's ruining his own value. Like, it just, like, is he even thinking about the fact that teams have to trust that you're going to stay here? Run it back, Philly! No frauds, no fanboys, no intros.